Okay, um, good morning guys once again. Uh, thanks for joining in. Good to see you all. Um, good to know that everybody's doing well. Good to have a bit of a chat before we start recording. Uh, great, great, great. We are, we are in the fourth week since we started, isn't it? I think this is the fourth week. Yeah, I think this is the fourth week. Good, I hope you guys have been uh, learning well, following along uh, with the lectures uh, and uh, I hope everybody had a chance to revise and um, actually most importantly, I hope everybody has been learning a lot. Uh, and um, yeah, like I've mentioned this before, uh, you know, I've had the privilege on teaching on the subject for some time now. And um, every time I have to prepare uh, to share, to speak, to teach, um, and it's beautiful how God keeps teaching me uh you know on the same subject on the same topic on different revelations um so so i'm so excited so thankful for that um and uh, i hope you are uh learning uh, a lot as well okay um so before we uh, go on can i request one of us to please um, lead us in prayer this morning please anybody Sure, Jeffy, go for it. Thanks. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful morning that you had given us. God, as we learn about how to praise you and worship you, let it fill our heart and let us fix it in our heart. And we bless our pastor who is teaching us and we bless everyone who is hearing us. Every word that we are hearing right now is the living words. And let us tear our heart and let us move our spirit and let us act in our faith that We'll keep praising and worshiping you all our days. We place everything in your hands in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jeffina. All right. Uh, let's get started. Um, so uh, let's do a quick recap, okay, from uh, Chapter 3, The Foundation of Praise, uh, from page 13. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's do a quick recap, um, re revision of what was done uh, last week. Um and then we'll follow on from there, okay? So um, this chapter is all about laying the foundations, uh, you know, for praise, just going deeper. In the first chapter, we just went through a couple of definitions for what praise is, understanding uh, the biblical definition and the dictionary definition for what praise is and uh, what sacrifice of praise really meant. That's That was just in the first chapter. Um, the second chapter was all about the postures of praise, the Hebrew words for praise and uh, Hebrew word for worship. Uh, and expressions of worship and praise. And in this chapter, we go a little deeper into understanding uh, praise, uh, you know, what it can do. Uh, okay, so we see that in page 13, um, there are, praise is direct and indirect. That means we can praise God directly, indirectly, okay? We praise him directly by extolling him, by exalting him, by expressing our admiration to him indirectly by commending him to others okay when we when we say to each other this is what he did this is how awesome he was in my life you know, this is how he he saw me through the difficult times that i was going through okay so by doing all of that we praise him indirectly okay um and so we saw a couple of scripture references for the origins of the word praise right and one of the key scriptures that we saw was from genesis chapter 29 um, verse from actually from verse 31 onwards, we saw how Leah, uh, she knew that she was hated, but God saw her. And every time God sees, it's not just that he's seeing and not hearing, okay? He sees and he hears, right? Uh, even when you don't speak, he hears because he can read your thoughts. He knows your thoughts, isn't it? Um, and so we see that how Leah was fighting for Jacob's love, for Jacob's attention, okay, for Jacob's focus to be turned towards her. And she names her first three sons likewise. And nothing changes. And then she's like, okay, you know, I can't do this on my own. I give up. I'm going to now praise. That means I'm going to fix my gaze on God. I'm going to shift my focus uh, and Jesus. And uh, and that's such a beautiful origin story of, uh, of Judah, isn't it? Um, 
And that wonderful psalm in Psalm 114, verse 2. And I just feel like uh, I just want us to read that just one more time for because it's beautiful. Um, psalm 114, verse 2, it says, Judah became God's sanctuary. Okay, Judah became God's sanctuary. And in parallel to that verse, we saw in Exodus 25, how God tells the people of uh, Israel, God tells Moses that people of Israel should build the tabernacle, or which is actually a sanctuary, a physical place, isn't it? A temple. Uh, and here we see that how praise is God's sanctuary. That simply means to say that he, is, he dwells. He surrounded himself with praise. That's where he lives. And we also saw that praise is God's, you know, praise is the heaven's atmosphere. It's his address. You want to find where God is, find a bunch of people who are praising him or you praise him. Okay, so that will lead you direct. It's just one straight road to God. Uh, and then another scripture reference we saw was from um, Matthew 21, 16, where Jesus is found quoting from Psalm 8, verse 2. Haven't you heard? Uh, from the lips of infants, you know, I have ordained praise. I have silenced the enemies with my praise from that same psalm. It goes on to say, with my praise, you have silenced. It's like, shh, you know, it's like silence. You have silenced my enemies. Um, and, and then we see a bunch of uh, reasons that we have to praise God. Okay, it's just a few. Uh, we went through the list. You know, we praise him because he's full of glory. We praise him because he is great. He is wise and powerful, wonderful, merciful. We praise him because he is faithful. We praise him because he is the one who saved us. We praise him because he keeps his promises, his word. We praise him because he pardons our sin. We praise him because he satisfies us by giving us our daily food, etc., etc., etc. And then we saw that heaven has only one reason to praise him. And that is everybody in heaven sees and knows that he is worthy. That's it. Right. And then from there, we kind of took a detour uh, on, on, on learning about the worthiness of Jesus, on why he is worthy. Okay. Um, yeah, we saw the beautiful uh, list of, of uh, you know, the blessing and honor, glory and power uh, be unto the King of Kings. And all of that just summarizes the perfectness of who Jesus is and what makes him worthy. OK, um, and then we see uh, that how that, you know, like we saw how God is enthroned on our praises, that he dwells in the middle of praises. Uh, and every time we praise him, no matter where we are. You know, that room, that that space becomes his throne room because that, you know, it, it, you know that's where God resides in the heavens, isn't it? Um, you know, his the room where he's surrounded is called a throne room. And that room is it's filled with praises unto him, right? From the cherubims and the seraphims, day and night, night and day, they are, you know, they're just praising him uh, from for generations uh from generations to generations, from everlasting to everlasting, they've been doing that. Um, okay, and then at the bottom of page fourteen, uh, you know, we see that uh, just a few points on, on on praise, distinctives of praise. It's extroverted in nature. It's very expressive. Uh, okay, it's not just keeping it to yourself, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and it's not just uh, addressed or to a certain bunch of people. Like, uh, uh, you know, only the extroverts praise the Lord. Uh, you know, it doesn't say that. Right? Everybody, like Psalm 100, you know, shout for joy, all the earth. All the earth, okay? It's not just a group of people, but praise is for everybody. Everybody's invited to praise him, okay? It's to be declared, manifested, okay? It's to be seen, right? And then in page, going on to page 15, um, I hope everybody is with me. We're just doing a quick revision. Uh, we're on page 15. Um, why should we praise? These are just a summary of all the points that we've actually seen. Point one is we are commanded in his word to do so. Secondly, God is enthroned on our praises, right? If he is enthroned, the enemy is dethroned by default. 
isn't it? Um, right. So there is power in praise, which we will look at this scripture today in, in today's lecture, Second Chronicles 20. Uh, and fourth point says it is a good thing to praise him. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. And we saw uh, in depth of uh, his worthiness. And that's why he is, uh, you know, we praise him because he is worthy of our praise. He is worthy. It's fitting. Uh, okay, we were created to praise him. That's like the bottom line. Okay, if any of us are struggling to find our purpose in life, our will in life, it's like, what is God's plans for me with this, that? <laughs> you know, in a very short summary, we say, okay, hey, your purpose, we were created to praise him. Uh -huh. Okay, and then the last two things which we didn't really look at last week uh, is when should we praise? Where do we praise? Um, I actually have more points to uh, which I wanted to add to this section on the Psalms talking about how to praise Him, uh, why we do, why are we to praise Him, etc. But for now, we'll just look at this. Okay, when should we praise? Um, Psalm thirty-four, verse one. Okay, let's. Let's turn to Psalm 34, verse 1. Psalm 34, verse 1. It says, I'm reading from the NIV. It says, I will extol the Lord at all times. Okay, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Okay, uh, let's read that verse in uh, different uh, languages, shall we? Um, in Everybody, I hope you have your Hindi Bibles, Tamil, Kannada, all ready, uh, just so we can hear it in different languages. And um, and I, after you read it in your language, I'd like you to just say, like, you know, your interpretation of what that verse is saying, uh, you know, in the language, because the translation might not always be word for word. So uh, everybody are ready, just go for it, anybody. Malayalam, I think. Psalm 34. Yeah, and Hawaii, Ella Kalatum Vartum. I understood the Eporum and the Navin Mail Iriku. Thanks, John. Could you read that one more time, please, if you don't mind? Yep. Yan, a Hawaii, Ella Kalatum Vartum. I understood the Eporum and the Navin Mail Iriku. Awesome. Thanks. So I noticed that uh, uh, it, it means every season, right? Ella Kalam. Yeah, yes, yes. Right? So, see, it's so different, isn't it? It's so beautiful. There. In, in English, it says, I will extol the Lord at all times. And you see how the language changes. changes. It's at, in every season, just like how we go through seasons, as in, you know, the weather goes through seasons. We have the winter, the summer, the spring, the autumn, the fall, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it says, okay, there's going to be seasons in your life, in our lives. And in every season... We're going to praise him. Okay. Uh, anybody else in another language? Anybody? So can I read in Hindi? Sure. Go ahead. Thanks. Sam's Bajan Sangeeta 34. Uska ek. Main har samay yehwa ko dhanya kaha karunga. Uski stuti nirantar mere muk se hoti rahegi. Thank you, Sikhin. So it, 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 I mean, it is implying the same thing, isn't it? So I will praise him at all times. Yes, Master. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any, any other language? Anybody? Yes. So what is that? Uh, it, it's not all times there, isn't it, Jafina? It's, uh, yeah, it, it's more like season, I believe. Okay. In, okay. Every season. In every season, every time. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Read it in Kannada. Yes, please. Uh, without a break, isn't it, Anita? Yes, Pastor. Awesome. So I will praise him without a break. Isn't it awesome to just read these verses in different languages and just to see this beautiful, uh, you know, everything is just so beautiful. Uh, I will pray. Okay, just so let's just see this now. Okay. It says, I. I will extol the Lord at all times. I will I will praise him at all times. I will praise him in every season. I will praise him without a break. 
that, and then you take that and you know and see what the Psalms is teaching us. When should we praise Him? Praise Him in every season. Praise Him at all times. Praise Him without a break. <laughs> uh, I mean, that just puts a, puts a smile on my face because it's so beautiful. Um, okay, and I think that's we kind of get the point there. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's just look at another scripture, Psalm, Psalm 52, verse 9. Psalm 52, verse 9. Anybody? Okay, Psalm 52, verse 9, it says, I will praise you for, forever for what you have done in your name, I will hope for your name is good. I will praise you in the presence of your saints. I will praise you forever. It starts off that verse, right? Um, so when should we praise? I think it's very uh, fair enough, uh, easy for us to summarize and say we praise him at all times in every season uh, without a break. I will praise him forever. We will be praising him forever as well. Uh, I will praise you forever. Just the heart behind the psalmist uh, there, it's its beautiful. Okay, uh, and Psalm 52, at the very top, it says, for the director of music, a maskil, it's a musical term, <laughs> it has a footnote, of, it's a maskil of David, it's a psalm of David. When Doeg, the Edomite, had gone to Saul and told him, David has gone to the house of Ahimelech. Ahimelech was a priest. Um, you know, the David goes and actually lies to. Okay. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, the last section of page 15. Last section of page 15. Where do we praise? Uh, we praise him in the congregation. We praise him at home. We praise, uh, we praise him before the nations and all peoples. Uh, okay. So let's look at a uh, few, few more scriptures. Psalm 149. Verse 1. Okay, Psalm 149, verse 1. It says, Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the saints. Okay, um, and let's look at Psalm 35. Going back and forth in the Bible. I hope that's okay. Okay, Psalm 35, verse 18. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. Among throngs of people, I will praise you. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. Among throngs of people, I will praise you. Um, just that Psalm 35, verse 18. Uh, and can we do that in uh, other language, in Hindi? Are you ready? Yes, Pastor. Psalm 35, verses 18. मैं बड़ी सभा में तेरा धन्यवाद करूंगा बहुत तेरे लोगों के बीच मैं तेरी स्तुति करूंगा awesome. thank you in big assembly i will praise you okay any other language anita you have kannada yes pastor aga nanu mahasabheyalli ninannu kondaduvenu bahu janara mutte stutisuvenu ninannu kondaduvenu means i will celebrate you isn't it as in, in the great assembly, I will celebrate you. You see one of those Hebrew words coming into play there, Shabbat, right? Uh, I will pray, oh, Hallel also, right? I will celebrate you, right? Uh, in the great assembly, it's like a festival. That's awesome. Okay, any, any other language? Uh, Can I read Malayalam? Yes, please. Yes, please. Psalms 35, verse 18. Nyan Maha Awesome. Okay. Thank, thank you, Priya. Okay. So, yeah, we have a way to be praised. We see that uh, we just read a couple of scriptures uh, where it encourages us to praise Him in the congregation, corporately, when we come together as a church, right? When the worship leader invites us to lift our hands in praise, He's not cheerleading. Right? It's an invitation for us to join in this beautiful, this historical act that's been going on for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. We're being invited to partake of that historical moment and just praise him with our hands lifted up. Praise him in the assembly. Praise him because there's power. 
in corporate worship, right? And we will learn more about that. What so how you know how powerful it is when everybody come together in one voice and lift up voices and praise God. Okay. Um, at home, let's go back to Psalm one forty nine. Uh, Verse 5, it says, let the saints rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. Okay, uh, at home as well. Okay, so ne never stop praising him. Okay, lying down, sitting down, okay, uh, working, cooking, cleaning, etc., etc. That's what it basically suggesting. Okay, so if you're going to praise him in your bed, you might as well praise him when you're not on your bed. Okay, uh, <laughs> um, so that's just wonderful. Uh, just a couple more psalms and uh, we'll move on from this section, okay? Are you guys okay? Yes? I'm not going too fast, am I? All right, okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, Psalm 96. Let's go to Psalm 96. Psalm 96, verse 1 to 3. Can someone read it for us, please? I'll read. Psalm 96, verse 1 to 3. Sing a new song to the Lord. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Each day proclaim the good news that he saves. Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Awesome. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Jeffina. Okay, so declare it again, once again, before the nations, and also it's so corporate in nature, uh, the Psalms here, right? Um, let's also go to Psalm 40, verse 3. Uh, I hope you have it ready. Psalm 40, verse 3 says, He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Okay, we will praise Him because He's again, Psalm 8. Uh, in a different form, it says, he has ordained praise. He has put a new song, a hymn of praise in our mouth, right? Um, so that's awesome. Um, so where do we praise? We praise him in the congregation. We praise him at home, okay? Uh, we, uh, we can't just tell ourselves that we're going to praise him in the congregation, in the church, in front of everybody, in front of my pastor, uh, so that I get a good name. Oh, look at that person. Oh, he's so extravagant in his praise. And then come back home and do all kinds of nasty stuff. <laughs> um, no, okay, you're praising him in the congregation corporately. You also praise him privately when nobody is seeing, right? Um, that was the most beautiful thing about the life of David, isn't it? Um, uh, Bill Johnson, I think uh, he said this, uh, when you kill a lion and bear in private, God will use you to kill a Goliath in public. Uh, you know, so I was like, whoa, that's a, such a profound thing to know. Okay, so when we, and, and when you look at the life of David as a shepherd, right? Uh, some time ago, we did a series on, on Psalm 23 uh, as a shepherd uh, with the youth. Um, and, you know, when you're a shepherd in that region, right? Like David was, you are gone into the wilderness, in the desert. You are alone all by yourself for hours. And all, and his only company was sheep. And so most of his Psalms, you know, it was all birthed one in the wilderness and the other when he was alone, when he had all the time in the world and he would just sing and sing and sing, play his instrument. That's where he honed his skill even. Right. Um, so it, when if you can praise him at home, if you can praise him when you are alone, it's easy, very easy to praise him corporately. Lifting up of your hands should not be a challenge. Yo, 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 okay, who, who, who's going to, you know, what are they going to think about me if I lift my hands? You know, if they think they're going to think I'm too radical. No, you know, corporate worship or praise is always an outpouring. It's an overflow of what happens in the private isn't it right so uh if you can praise him in, you know alone in the rooms it's very easy and natural for you to praise him uh, it will come naturally for you to praise god corporately okay um so yeah that's the end of that section psalm 15 uh, sorry page 15 <sighs> too much of psalms i guess <laughs> uh all right so uh yeah everybody good yeah okay awesome 
I can see everybody's thumbs up, even if your videos are off, it's cool. <laughs> All right, let's move on. So now let's go to the power of praise, the next chapter in page 16, okay? The power of praise. Um, okay, let's all go in your Bibles to uh, the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 20. Second Chronicles, chapter 20. In your notes, you will only see chapter 20 and verse 20, but uh, we're going to read at least half the chapter, okay, from the beginning. So I hope that's okay. All right. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1 onwards. Um, Actually, can I request uh, each of us, if we can read five verses each, and I'm going to stop at, uh, let's stop at verse 22, okay? So until verse 22, Second Chronicles chapter 20, from verse 1 to verse 22, uh, I'd like us to take turns in reading five verses each. So we'll see how many, will. okay? Let's go. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Mennonites came to make war on Jehoshaphat. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast army is coming against you from Edom, from other sides of the sea. It is already in Hezron, Tamar, that is in Engedi. Alam Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire the Lord, and he proclaimed afar for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then Joseph stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in front of the new courtyard and said, O Lord God of our father, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nation. Power and might are in your hand and no one can withdraw you. Thanks, Sikidna. So let's just look at the first six verse, okay, before we continue. Um, so after this, the Moabites, the Ammonites, uh, with some Munites came to war on Jehoshaphat. And we see that uh, a vast, second verse says, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the sea. It is already in Hazazon, Tamar, Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord. If you have your Bibles and pen handy, underline that, okay? Inquired of the Lord. Alarmed Jehoshaphat. That means he was warned. Um, he resolved, okay? That means he decided. That word resolved to, um, in my Bible, I don't know which word. I uh, resolved to inquire of the Lord. And then the next line is also very important. He proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. So, uh, you know, in, in this section, in this chapter, we're going to see how praise and intercession are closely related, okay? Um, Judah proclaimed a fast for all Judah, okay? Sorry, Jehoshaphat proclaimed a fast for all Judah. That's an entire nation, right? Judah means what? Praise, isn't it? Um, so the people of Judah, okay? In other words, the people of praise, okay? the people of praise came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Okay, to seek him. Um, verse 5, then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah. Okay, once again, uh, you know, we, we read in Psalm 149 and Psalm 35, verse 18, we says, I will praise you in the great assembly. Okay, you see that you see that connection here. Jehoshaphat stood up in the great assembly, or in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem, at the temple of the Lord, in front of the new courtyard, and said, "O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God who is in heaven? You rule over the kingdoms of the earth." Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. Okay, you rule over all the kingdoms of the nations, he says. Okay, um, but when you read verse 1, technically there are only three nations that's 
come uh, and it's amazing how Jehoshaphat says you rule over all the nations not just our, my nation and not just the three nations that are attacking us but you rule over every kingdom of the earth okay it's amazing the prayers that he uh, you know the words that Jehoshaphat is using here right okay let's move on can someone else read uh, the next um, three verses uh, yeah from seven to nine I'll read. O oh, our God, did you not drive out those who live in the land when your people Israel arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? Your people settled here and built this temple to honor your name. They said, whenever we are faced with any calamities, such as war, plague, or famine, we can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. We can cry cry out to you to save us and we you will hear us and rescue us awesome thank you Jeffy. let's just continue please someone from verse 12 10 sorry but now here are men from ammon moab and mount seir whose territory you would not allow israel to invade when they came from egypt so they turned away from them and did not destroy them See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. Our God will not, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Rosalind. Okay. Uh key scriptures here okay this section but now here are men from ammon moab and mount seir whose territory you would not allow israel to invade when they came from egypt so they turned away from them and did not destroy them see how they are repaying by uh, uh, us by coming down to drive us out of the position you gave us as an inheritance okay uh, again you should notice the choice of words jehoshaphat okay we didn't take this this is not our land you gave us this uh, piece of land uh, as our inheritance okay then verse 12 oh our god will you not judge them for we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us this next lines is just beautiful we do not know what to do but our eyes are upon you hey uh, how many of us have made that prayer how many of us have been in a situation in our lives they say i don't know what to do god i don't know what is happening have no there's no logical explanation to what i'm going through but my eyes are on you right and just, I mean, you know, put yourself in the shoes of Jehoshaphat, the King Jehoshaphat, okay? If your land is going to be from all sides, right? We are in this piece of land. Imagine that every nation, okay? Let's just say, for example, India, because, you know, not biased or anything, but as an example, okay? So, you know, Sri Lanka is uh, invading us from the south. There's Bangladesh. And China wanting to invade us from the east, and this Pakistan, and Afghanistan, and everybody else want to invade us from the north and the west, northwest. Um, and we are alone, okay? Uh, we are easily overpowered, overwhelmed by the power, okay? What would you do? How would you feel? Uh, you know, the, and if we know anything about what war does, uh, in the history, it ruins lives, it ruins places, it's, it ruins cities. Most importantly, it kills people, right? That's what happens. That's what war does, okay? Uh, now, I want to make something on a side note here, but, you know, like it or not, guys, we are born into battle. You and I, we are born into battle. Okay, so uh, with that in mind, just, you know, Jehoshaphat in his own way has has been, uh, you know, in many situations that we've kind of been in. We faced our own battles, isn't it? But that prayer, it just humbled me so much. Uh, and every time I read it, even now, it just breaks me. Like, we do not know what to do. <laughs> we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. 
um and then verse 13 let's go on uh, somebody else let's let's go let's go this is good verse 13 somebody please now all judah with their little ones their wives and their children stood before the lord then the spirit of the lord came upon jehaziel the son of zechariah the son of benaiah the son of jael the son of Metaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, Listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, this says the Lord to you. Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you. Uh... I mean, just look at the prerequisites there, okay? Before the Spirit of the Lord came on upon a person, okay, before that happened, see what happened, okay? All the men of Judah, that means all the men of praise, with their wives and children and little ones, that means infants, suckling babies, stood before the Lord. I mean, we read that in the first three verses, right? They came to seek Him. And so... Just coming together, you know, with one heart, you know, as, as a family, you know, uh, it's just so much power. So when you come together with one heart, with, with one mind, and that's, we also read that in Acts, isn't it? And first chapter says they all gather together in one accord with one heart. When all of them gather together in one heart, in one accord, then the spirit of the Lord came. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm, the reason I'm going through this entire chapter is not so that, okay, they, everybody sang and they won. You know, that's not the point for us to, you know, we could do that. But we just, uh, this whole chapter is telling us a story of this victory, isn't it? Um, so everybody gathered together. Then the spirit of the Lord came uh, upon a prophet um, in Jehaziel. And then he says, listen, King Jehoshaphat and all uh, who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Amen. Thanks for reading that, Divya. Uh, somebody can take it from verse 16 onwards, please. From verse 16. Tomorrow go down against them. Behold, they will come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the valley in front of the wilderness of Jeruel. You need not fight this battle. Station yourself. Stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out to face them, for the Lord is with you. Okay. Thank you, John. All right. So again, uh, he's just continuing to declare, the prophet is continuing to tell the king what's going to happen tomorrow. He's giving uh, instructions, uh, guidance, uh, and, and it's also a command, okay? So all you have to do is go down to this place, go down to that valley, you know, take up your positions, stand firm, okay? Uh, go out and face them tomorrow, for the Lord will be with you. That, okay, so until then, they still haven't gone into the battle. They still haven't fought. But see the response of Jehoshaphat, okay? Uh, let's from verse 18. Somebody, please. Henry? Yes, please. Go ahead. Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Kohathites and Korahites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. Awesome. Thank you, Priya. Okay. What does Jehoshaphat does? He shaha. Remember that word? Shaha. He bowed down with his face to the ground. That means he put his face to the ground. Okay, that's uh, the ultimate form of uh, worship, isn't it? Uh, uh, okay. And all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. When the king, when the leader worship, or the rest of the nation worship with him 
Okay, then some of the Levites from the Kohathites. These are the different clans of the tribe of Levites. Okay, That's the Levi had three sons. Okay, and uh, they are the different clans of the tribe of Levi. So that's what's mentioned here. And all of them stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. It's not just voice. It's not just loud voice. It's the very loud voice. Okay. Uh, Shabbat. That is what is happening there. Okay. One, and again, like I mentioned, they haven't even gone into the battle. All God said is, you don't have to fight this battle because I'm with you. Go there and take up your position. So they began to worship God even before they entered the battle scene. Isn't that amazing? And the next we see in verse 20, uh, early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. Verse 21. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness. As they, who the musicians, the worship team, as they went out, the head of the army saying, Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Verse 22. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set out ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated. They killed each other, basically. <laughs> um, Well, I mean, now, now tell me, is there power in praise, guys? Is there power in praise? Speak to me, class. Yes, Pastor, very much. Yes, Pastor. Amazing power. Yes, 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 yes. There is power in praise because it shifts the focus. Uh, and they went into the warfare, you know, not taking on the enemy. But they fix their gaze on Jesus, isn't it? That's so beautiful. Um, okay, sorry. Oops, oops, oops. Where is that? All right. Okay, so um, what we'll do is uh, yeah, I just feel like um, just praying before we bring the session to a close and uh, you know, it's very strange. So um, let's, just, let's just pray, okay, right, right now. I feel like we need to position ourselves, um, you know, just like how Jehoshaphat, uh, uh, you know, uh, commanded the people of Jerusalem and Judah to take up their position. Um, I just feel led to do that right now is uh, because I don't know who's going through what. Uh, you know, we have 23 individuals, uh, 22 excluding me i don't know everything what you are going through but uh, let's just, uh, fix our gaze okay uh, we might not know what to do but let's uh, fix our eyes on him right now okay so lord thank you for this text that you preserved for us thank you that this text has endured battles uh, and endured people wanting to burn it to the ground Thank you, Lord, that you have preserved this text for us, for this year, for today, for such a time as this, for us to understand that how you were with your people thousands and thousands of years ago, and to be encouraged knowing that you are with us today, right now, here in this moment. And so, Father, we uh, right now, I just take this time and opportunity to pray for those who are in situations where they don't know what to do, but whose eyes are on you. Lord, we as a class, we, we come in agreement with one heart. We, we uh, unite our hearts. We stand in the gap and we intercede to the, for those individuals and their families, God. Let there be a divine breakthrough, like we read, Father. Let the enemies be scattered, Father. 
release divine favor upon your people, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, so I'll pause the recording now. Uh, you guys can go for your break, and I'll see you all in 10 minutes.